Alright, so here we are this morning on today's version of a Salt Hunter. I'm here with Brian with Orion Design Group. Today we're going to go test out the Walker Bay 310 Honda 9.9 in a variety of Cabela's fishing gear to go catch salmon off the beaches of downtown Seattle. So today on a Salt Hunter, we're going to go test out the apartment boat fishing setup. We know a lot of you out there want to get out in the outdoors, want to salmon fish, hike, hunt, do all that other stuff, but boats, man, they're, they're expensive. They are expensive. Does it bring on another thousand? What's a hole in the water into which money is thrown? <laughs> yeah. 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 So I got my fellow maritime brother here, former Marine, and um, I've done a little bit of work on boats too, and I really like the inflatable boats, man. They're like a big life raft. They're a great tool. Yeah, and they uh, they can fold down and get really compact. You don't need a big high horsepower motor. They're really fuel efficient. And you can actually store one in an apartment. In a closet. In a closet, right? So what we're going to do today is we're going to show you uh, how to fish out of an apartment and hopefully catch some big Puget Sound silvers or king salmon. And remember what they say, if it flies, fucks, or floats, you should probably rent it. <laughs> All right, so we just got done um, inflating the Walker Bay 310 air floor with the NRS super pump. The stock pump sucked. Uh, I wouldn't get it to pressure, so I canned it and used my REI dividend to get the NRS super pump. Got a little warm. Uh, it's definitely a two-person job, and uh, we're feeling it so much right here and right here, pumping the boat up. But we're, uh, we're old. Yeah, we're old. <laughs> but hey, we're going to get this thing down to the water. We're going to throw the motor on it, and then uh, we're going to go fishing. Let's do it. <laughs> Amphib, baby. This whole setup, if you were to buy a commercial off the shelf, would probably cost you in the neighborhood of about $3,000, and it fits in the back of an SUV or a small pickup. Now, a lot of guys will spend 50, 100 million bucks on a fishing boat to catch the same size fish that we're going to catch today out of this tiny little boat. So, let's go see if we can make it happen. And Four first Paul. Right, here to go. Let's wait for it to warm up for a second. And we're gonna get going. Alright, so because we are fishing off a tiny little Zodiac and we don't have downriggers, you can get downriggers for your boat, but they're expensive, blah, blah, blah. You don't really need it. All you really need is you need to get, we're fishing for silvers today, so you need to be out 30 to 50 feet of water. Get the bait down there, present your bait, make sure it has good action. And so what we're using is we're using the, the deep six. So what happens is, is this thing dives down to depth and then when a fish hits it, it snaps loose and then you're not dragging that through the water anymore. We're fishing on the Cabela's Sea Striker foldable rods. Uh, they are not downrigger rods. They're not meant to be, but they fit up in a tube and they fit in a closet really well. So we're gonna see today if they will work for the deep six divers for fishing silvers. And now for, here's the magic. This is where the magic happens. Right here. 
So uh, we just cut up some cut plug herrings, brined them all out, and a great way to just keep everything organized in your tiny little boat is to just keep it organized. So what it is, we just tied up all the leaders um, at home, got them all brined up in some rock salt, and then I just put them on pieces of straw. So all you do is just pull the straw off, toss it back in your box, and now your leader's brined up with herring, ready to go. You're not messing with it in the back of the boat. Right, so what you're going to see here is the diver is going to pull it down, the flasher is going to start whipping back and forth, and then the bait's going to be reeling behind it. So it's awesome. It's got the, just going to set the drag out, let it pull itself down. What depth do you want to run that at? Uh, this one's probably going to run at like 30 feet or so. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to tighten the drag up to get it where I want it, stick it in the rod holder, and I uh, hope the rod holders don't come unglued from the boat. Because I, I got these rod holders um, with some 3M super adhesive on the boat. And uh, what I'm finding is as I fold it up, I'm getting a little bit of like separation there. So these, uh, these rod holders might be great for ribs that stayed and floated all, all the time, but for right now, for what we're doing, uh, might be not the best application, so I'm actually going to tie these rod holders off to the side of the boat with some trusty 550 cord. <laughs> All right, so typically what you do when you're salmon fishing is you don't know what they're hitting on. Um, so I fish a cut plug herring on one side and now I've got a green deep six diver, a green flasher, and now I'm gonna flish a green hoochie off the back. And hoochies are um, essentially squid. So salmon eat a lot of squid. Right there. Now the, the cut plug herring's got a lot of action on its own, so it spins around on the water, causes you know, causes its own motion, but this thing, it doesn't. So what you do is you put it on a stiffer, shorter leader, and as that flasher whips around, it gives this thing some action for the salmon to see and chase after. As you can see, there's a lot of gear here hanging off the end of the rod. So you gotta make sure you get it into the water just right to present it. So you see that flasher is just kicking around back and forth and it's making that hoochie over there just swim back and forth real slow. Might have a fish on. Alright, bait's down. Now we pour coffee and chill. So what's the first rule of salmon fishing, Brian? Don't touch the bait. Don't touch the effing bait. So a lot of people don't know, but salmon are a freaking miracle here in the Northwest. And so they're born in about two inches of water and they make it 40 miles to the salt water right here in the Puget Sound. And they make it all the way through the Strait of Juan de Fuca out to the Pacific. Then they're out there killing and eating for five years. And then they smell their way back right into the same two inches of water they were born in. So when you're putting your bait in the water, don't get oil and all the other stuff on there. Try to be as clean as possible as you can uh, with your bait. And so that way, when the, the fish gets up next to your bait, they don't shy away because it smells funny. So, tip of the day. A little, just a little guy. It's just a little guy. Just a little rockfish, a little sea bass, but at least we didn't get skunked. A successful expedition with the salt hunter. 310 Walker Bay with a Honda 99 on it, outfitted with a bunch of Cabela's gear. So let's just talk through the boat real quick. It's uh, approximately 10 foot long, a Zodiac, or 10 foot long inflatable. Uh, the cool thing about this boat, the Walker Bay, is it's got a square nose, which actually gives you a little bit more storage up front. Follow me in here. 
And then it's got the fuel tie down here, which keeps the fuel tank nice and secure. And underneath there is an inflatable air keel. Just store the pump to the side with the nice little straps that are in there. They have uh, metal cargo straps uh, on the front and on the bow for anchor line and ropes. Uh, come on down, the issue with one fiberglass seat. And you can either put forward or rear and slide in here. Uh, comes with you know, paddles already ready to go. Nice little fiberglass transom. And uh, it's got a draining seal out of the back. Unique to this boat, it's got an inflatable floor to 11 PSI and an inflatable keel. So the thing, when you inflate it all down, you don't have panels and everything else that you're snapping together. Literally just pump it all up and it's good to go. Okay, we're just Sub 60 pound boat. Works really well, catches fish, runs really efficiently. I would say that this is good for assault hunting. All right, so we finished up the day. First day of Assault Hunter, first fishing trip with Old Lone Element, at Lone Element from Orion Design Group at ODG USA. Um, he's a designer and typically known as a, a very peculiar person about gear. And so we're gonna have him talk through the negatives that he saw today on the boat. Cause I'm pretty satisfied with how things went. I saw some improvements being our first time out on the boat, but he'd mentioned a few things that, uh, so having the marine background that I do with small craft, small boat work, small combat rubber rating craft, um, there was some things that I noticed like there, that there were handles, there needed to be some handles, uh, closer to the engine so that you can pick it up, more, pick up the rear of the boat with the engine on it more efficiently and move it. Um, D-rings to rig the craft for you know lashing points to tie down gear. Um, that, those were the only two main things that I that I saw that were that were a little bit deficient with the way the craft was designed and put together. Yeah, I don't think it was mainly meant for, for the type of use that we put it through, but uh, a couple little accessories. I think we can glue some adhesive on there, some adhesive D-rings. Yeah, you know, on the inside and, and some handles in there. I think it would be good to go. Um, I think the, the negatives on the fishing is we were using those deep six divers with the, the small like, seven inch pro troll flashers. And I think there was just too much drag on those and it wasn't getting the, the bait down to where we wanted it to be. So I think I'm gonna get some of the zero drag ones. I've never fished with those before, but that seems to be the trick with those deep six divers. Uh, the herrings work good, the hoochies work good. I mean, we caught a rock bass with hoochie today. Yeah, green hoochie as always works. Uh, what else? I don't know, like when my daughter went out on the boat, she handled it fairly confidently. She really enjoyed it, took her friend out. She did that very well. All around, like I, th I think just to get a couple more ropes in the boat, I, I know I need a, uh, a sand spike. Uh, we pulled the boat up on shore. I didn't have the anchor rope for it. I didn't have a sand spike. So we, we definitely made sure that we hauled the thing up and up so that wave wouldn't take the boat out when we walked away from it on shore, which is kind of a cumbersome pain in the butt versus those boats, you should be able to drag them up drag off the bow, shoving a sand spike, and then you'd be good to go. Um, I think the boat, I mean, for what it is with that engine on it, like it, it, it handled really well on the water. Um, the boat came up on plane relatively easy. Um, you know, for a little nine, was that a little nine horse? Nine, nine, yeah. Yeah, it scoots, what do we get, 18, 20 knots? Uh, we, we, before we adjusted the trim, we got it, uh, we got it 18 knots uh, with both of us in it. So with all yeah. of our gear and 400 pounds of human. Um, I trimmed it out a little bit after we got out of it with my daughter and that thing got up on plane really quickly. Good. I had less splash down by the transom on the motor and it seemed like it was running smoother on the water uh, to lower RPM. So once you get it up on plane, then you can throttle back and keep it up on plane and be really fuel efficient. So that way you can go far uh, with your boat. Yeah, we even had just a tiny bit of chop and it, it, handled, it handled it well. Yeah, that inflatable floor, it feels really weird at first. You feel like your boat's gonna like fall apart, but it just kind of like, it just rides the wave. And then it just stables right back out. You know, it doesn't you yeah, know, for keep not, flopping. For not having rigid deck plates in it, it did come up on plane pretty quick, quickly too. So, and, it, and it was a smooth ride. So all in, the Walker Bay 310. Uh, more positive than negative. Honda 99, it's a Honda motor, so it's gonna run awesome. Uh, all the Cabela's gear, I was really stoked about the Cabela's fishing bag, they sent it to me. And I, to be honest, I didn't open it for like six months and I opened it up and had all these cool six organization trays in there. I only needed two for the gear that we were hauling today. Uh, one for the gear, uh, for the fishing lures, and then one for the camera gear that we had in there. And then we were able to throw uh, lunch, beers, everything else in the uh, in the other side of it, the drone, 
uh, all of our lures, flashers, sunblock, wallets, phones, chargers, that bag fit everything in the boat fairly well and it wasn't in the way too much. Um, no. no, not at all. And I think we, I think we probably situated better here in the future to work yeah. out of it better. But other than that, man, all the gear worked fantastically well. So that was yeah, it. I want to take a left here. Oops, sorry. I missed it. Anyway, too much recording, not enough driving. And with <laughs> that, Ace Alt Hunter, we're out.